Well, thanks to Daylight Savings Time, it is still quite sunny here after race one at Northfield Park. I'm in between races. The next time I gotta do anything is the warm up stay special after the fifth. I did notice a little bit of white stuff in her nose. A um, little bit of, I don't know, mucus, but I mean, with the weather, what are you gonna do? It is what it is. Uh, we'll see how she races tonight. But as I said to Jason, I'll go last trip with her, see how she feels, see how her nose looks after. And then. Um, and then we'll see what's what. I don't imagine it's going to make a big deal. Is she going to be 105% tonight? Probably not, but she's coming off two kind of rather concerning lines. You know, we have the backstory and understand it, but oops, not everybody does. Um, so anyway, we'll see how she is. Now uh, we'll go to the racehorses. A lot going on this week. The racehorses, we kept the racing great. Um, uh, we moved another horse this week in Wallop. And, you know, I'm I'm somewhat unapologetic in, to, now when it comes to the horses that we're moving with good reason. You know, if you look at the way a lot of the horses that left have raced, uh, and, and I'm not the guy that just hopes that they go backwards when they leave. I don't. I hope they do good for the new owners, especially Locatelli. I hope that um, Natasha Day has some good luck with that horse. Uh, so I am I am rooting for her and him. Uh, a good horse nonetheless, but you guys know my type, my take on Locatelli was it was going to be difficult to race him on a B track. Uh, what I mean by B track would be the Meadows or send him to Kentucky. Tough place to race a horse like him. He doesn't get off the gate well. He doesn't get around the turns as good. Uh, when it came to Mohawk, I, I told you guys I was sick and tired of racing horses against one another. White Tiger was not an open trotter, yet spent a third of his time, it seemed like, in the open. Same with Locatelli. So one could argue a third of his starts per year with complete wastes of time. I guess less Locatelli than, than White Tiger, but he, nevertheless, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Wallop, it just turned out that he couldn't do in the class that I, I just thought he could. Now, will that class get softer over the next little while? It might, but this game is all about timing, and, and I wasn't, nor do I think any of my partners were okay just watching him finish fifth and sixth until that particular class softens up a little bit. I would rather move him and... and uh, Especially with our, our ton of our sophomores. We have nine horses to qualify next week in Ohio. We qualified three the other day in Ontario. We have seven more coming behind that. That's 19. We have two more. One for sure in Pennsylvania is 20. And then the the better ones still have to come. By the better ones, I mean the ones that with a little more higher expectations. Uh, memory and imagination, pickpocket, arson. They come later on. So we have between... And I know I'm missing some. We have between 23, 24, and 30 horses to qualify over the next two, three, four weeks. And it's an exciting time. And when it comes to horses that we know, and I've said this, I beat this drum a million times. Horses that are going to go on the track at 8 or 10 to 1. No fault of their own. Just is what it is. And, and the only way to really, truly mitigate that is to move the horses on. And for that, uh, some of the horses are going to leave. And I think got through quite a few of them and we are left with a brace for landing just qualified also he's going to be going to kentucky and racing in kentucky uh not this coming uh not a week from yeah maybe a week from monday or tuesday maybe i guess there's nowhere to race him at northfield park i'm not tagging him uh numbers of six or seven is too high and meadows doesn't race a week ah worry too much about it. Brace for landing was awesome. Qualifying the other day. Let's just leave it at that. He's ready to go. Um, what else we got here? Collector. I just saw Collector a little while ago. He's at the barn in Northfield. Uh, Dr. Latessa was looking at him. We're getting him shot and then he's going down to Stacy's. He's going to race next Wednesday. In I think she said Wednesday, but I thought it was Thursday in the Now Wars of Four series. Whatever that might be. Um, uh, he raced great the other night. I, I almost didn't take him. He raced so good, I should have taken him. You know, I, I just I just thought he just pushed over a little bit. That's where he should be. You know, they're going to race for pretty good money in that final. And he's coming in razor sharp. You know, Harry and James done a great job with this horse. Here's a horse, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Brace for Landing. There could be more there. Now, in Brace's case, I hoped, I wanted, I dreamed. I forced myself into the situation where Brace for Landing would be a top-class trotter. And I think he may still get there. But I don't see a huge difference between uh, even him uh, him a little while ago and, and Collective. Very, very similar horses um, in their makeup. 
not their breeding, obviously, but in their makeup. So, collect and brace for landing similar horses, and unfortunately, brace doesn't get to go race on an hours of four class, but collector certainly does. Um, and now that I see it out loud, I should have raced on an hours of six, I guess. I never thought of that. Um, Irish Ray raced better the other day, finishing second. You know, I, I, I know my expectations were tempered. My father and my parents were, were obviously, especially my father, thought that Ray wanted Ray to be this this killer. Um, you know, as he headed west from the from the east coast of Canada. And it's just a tough thing to export is horses from the east coast, right? You got some watered-down stallions, some watered-down mares, and, and there are some horses that, that come out of there that are just truly killers. But um, not a lot, not a lot. And this certainly no fault of the breed. It just is what it is. It's hard to hide from, from DNA. Um, Kenobi has been racing great in, uh, in New York, I guess. He raced once in New Jersey in New York. He's been racing fantastic. Mark, Melissa, Brett doing a great job with that guy. Uh, Spitfire Overseas. What a man, you know, I'm not always, as I say this all the time, I'm not always going to be right, but I'm not always going to be wrong. And when it came to Spitfire Overseas, we had our opportunity to move him, and I just hadn't thought that we'd seen enough. And really, that's what it boils down to, is that I have to ask myself, what do the paths look like forward? Are they clear? Are they a little rocky? Unpaved, so to speak. And when it came to um, Spitfire Overseas, I just couldn't, I couldn't get a clear view of his future, and that was because I didn't have enough information. Now, I didn't, I can't, in all honesty, tell you that I saw a 151 mile coming from that horse, but he already won in 52. And uh, I can tell you this, wasn't shocked in the least to see him do it, um, but I couldn't have forecasted it. And very proud of, of that. GC's turned into such a nice horse, and I think he's going to be with us for quite a while. He looks like, you know, it, we have a number of horses that seem like they were on the cusp of really turning that corner from the three-year-old into the aged horse division. Some of them fell a little bit short, and we've since moved on from them horses, from those horses. But, um, uh you know, he, he truly looks like, well, he doesn't look like he is. He just won the open from a, a relegated nine hole. So, so yeah, he has to turn the corner. Um, uh, stay special. I just mentioned her. She's racing here tonight. Uh, going to be a little short and I'm concerned. She may not be hundred percent. No temperature. Eight dollar lunch seems good, but does have a little discharge in the one nostril. So we're keeping an eye on that. Tactical mounds, um, richest year we've ever had with any horses and I hope we eclipse that all the time but for right now it has been tactical mounds made a lot of money last year has trained back great and looked very very good training the other day she also will be qualifying on Thursday and then she'll be heading directly uh, to the east coast with Megan she'll be joining the Megan Scran stable tech song soprano who's already gone that route and look there's look great Scott Zeron's obviously done a great job with the horse as he always does and Megan has done a uh, wonderful job with him also um, Wallop. Wallop is no longer with us. We've moved on from Wallop. I liked Wallop. You know, it just seemed to me when I looked at his lines and I, I really, really, truthfully thought that we would find something in his blood. His GGT would be a little bit high, right? It's, something would be going on with, with Wallop. And looked at his blood the other day after he raced. Not one anomaly. Nothing out of the ordinary. Not even close. So, uh, you know, when you have a horse that, that got a decent trip and looked flat, didn't look good, we drew his blood, we scoped him, there's nothing to be found. And quite frankly, the evidence points to him just being an okay trotter. That's fine. That's not what we're looking for in Wallop. I would hope that with seven wins, he would, maybe eight wins, he would be able to graduate into the class where, uh, into the class where Unbeatable Kemp is going to be leaving very soon. And uh, we'll talk about him in a minute. But Wallop, uh, yeah, kind of a little bummed out about it. But, you know, he didn't hurt anybody. He did good for us when he was here. Um, all gas, no brakes. I was talking to Amy today. So the other day when he made that break, he, he cut the back of his ankle. And it was in a place. It wasn't, in, it wasn't a bad cut, but it was in a tricky place. Kind of right where the tendon sheath is at the back where the sesamoid is. And it wasn't super deep, but it was a deep enough cut that they were worried Worst case scenario, there could get some infection in there, and you start getting infection in around that tendon sheath area. That's very, very bad. So, uh, just out of an abundance of caution, Doctor Grossenbacher, uh, Grossenbacher had asked uh, that we take him to the clinic, which was a surprise to me, and not really what I want to do because it, it always results in a, a decent kind of vet bill. 
Um, but we have to do what's right for the horse. And, and he's going to do, he, he, that will be paid back in dividends. You can be sure of that. Great. All gas, no brakes, just a nice horse. Unfortunate break from him, but, um, I'm sure he'll be just fine. Um, he will be just fine. Now, one of the huge, biggest question marks of the week, the, the only thing that kept me out of Ontario this weekend, quite frankly, uh, was greatest ending. How would he be? You know, a lot of uncertainty, right? Here's a horse we paid, I, I think, was he the most expensive? No, he wasn't Captain Incredible. Was. But uh, one of the most expensive horses we've ever bought. And it has been underwhelming, right? And always seemed to have an excuse. It wasn't that he was a bad horse or a bad attitude. Always seemed to have an excuse, but just needed an excuse because he wasn't good. What were we going to do with this guy? How's this going to play out? We got trained in the back of GG. He, T was high. He had one leg that was bothering him. It wasn't bo it was bothering me. It wasn't really bothering him. It was bothering me quite a bit. And uh, a, a number of minor little things. So we had been training him back, and and uh, it was my brother Mark actually. My brother Mark said, "Anthony, why don't you race that horse free leg?" I said, "Where did that come from?" He said, "No, no. He, they tried to race him as a three year old free leg. They, they qualified him, I think, in in Florida. Sure enough, I looked up his lines. He shows one line as a qualifier, made a break at the three quarter pole with Doctor Ian Moore, but did try and qualify free leg." So, uh, the, the biggest component of greatest ending and the problem he has is, um, stress, right? His feet bother him because his feet bother him. He gets a little hot. Sometimes you can hear him make a little noise if he's really wound up sometimes in the mile. And this, I believe led to him bleeding just a hair enough to be on Lasix. But again, here's a horse that frets a lot and can, gets very worked up. Now he's got to go somewhere four hours before the race to get administered Lasix. Ties up easy. Well, it, it stands to reason that if we can keep his stress down, keep his feet good and his stress down, the, the bleeding should dissipate and disappear. And um, what easier way to do that than just have no equipment on him? He shows try being tried free-legged. Why don't we do that? So we had trained him free-legged a mile and a half, mile and a half, mile and a half. He was fine, but never really tested him. And then you guys got to see me test him on uh, the training video here two weeks ago, uh, less than two weeks ago, mile and 55, just like it was a stroll for him. No big deal whatsoever. And you could feel how calm he was when I was sitting in the race bike. I could feel how calm he was, but that's not a race. That's just out for a stroll in the park. That's a training mile by yourself on a track with no one else around you. It's not a race. So I didn't know what to think. Um, so I stayed back uh, Patrick the Piranha, I say, I joked, anybody could have dri driven, uh, anybody could have driven Patrick the Piranha. I, uh, chose to stay and go with greatest ending also. Uh, just so impressed with the horse. That was, it wasn't a win. It wasn't a 49 mile, but it was one of the most impressive miles I've seen in quite a while. The way he just effortlessly switched gears, matter of factly around the last turn, moved over. And I think if I had a really revved him up and not put him on the run, which I don't think I would have, I win easy. So, uh, I was talking to Aaron Merriman after, after the race and, you know, anybody that watched the horse just saw how impressive he looked. And I had said to him, I said, you know, if we can just get four five, six, eight weeks of racing like this into this horse, scary, scary animal. Uh, so I, it just goes without saying that I was super impressed with greatest ending in his performance the other day. JK victory is training back good. Jason Mumpy the other day goes, I was surprised he trained good at Northfield park. They were only going slow. He said he trained really good. Now, Indiana starts tonight, so we're going to take our time. We're going to get greatest ending ready. Looks good. A little crutchety, a little cranky, but looks good on the track and really, really happy with uh, really happy with him. Also, he'll be ready in four or five weeks, I would imagine. Uh, where are we at here? Looks like money. I know uh, Johnny, one of my partners at Messer, he said, Jesus, frustrating that looks like money. You know, we got him ready right when he can't race. I said, no, nah, not, not really. Um, I don't think it's upsetting at all, actually. When I look at, when I look at greatest, or when I look at, uh, looks like money, here's a horse that, of course I would do that. Here's a horse that was in, in desperate need of, uh, signed in the wrong account. Of course I did. Um, here's a horse that desperately needed some, as, as I called it, some structured training, right? Where we could go out and go hour miles with him. 
we don't have to go out and follow speed, follow speed, follow speed until he's tight. We can make our own speed whenever we wanted to. And by the way, James is talking. His schoolers have gone incredible. And he looked absolutely fantastic the other day. So it looks like money uh, well on his way to being in top, top, top form. Very, very happy to hear that. Uh, yep, yeah, I can do that. Um, Renegade Gypsy racing tonight in uh, racing tonight in um, uh, Indiana. His first start back. I had to go and get. Uh, I preached to all you guys get you about getting your licensing done. And Lana from Indiana State Racing Commission called me and said, Anthony, uh, you got to get licensed. I said, oh, All right, who do I got to get licensed? She goes, No, no, you got to get licensed for tonight. <laughs> Oh, I apologize. I'll do that right now. Indiana is very easy, very user friendly. They're they're a software, and I was licensed within ten minutes, uh, just online. So very happy with what I saw from. Uh, just having to go here, of course. All I wanted to do was catch this tax shop, and I did not. Darn it. Okay. Um, not the end of the world. Um, so Renegade Gypsy races tonight, uh, races tonight in Indiana. I, I didn't see the class, um, but I suspect he's in where he can do some damage. Serious Dragon and one of my partners, Dave, messaged me, today, said, Serious Dragon looks very good training down. Look good today at the farm. Harry was going with him. Now, I haven't talked to Harry. This is just from Dave, but he said from a layman's eyes, the horse looked fantastic, which is good. Um... Three point blue chip was supposed to qualify today. I didn't check the chart lines, but he was supposed to qualify today, I believe, in New Jersey and be ready to rock, uh, which I suspect he did. Unbeatable Kemp. Now, here's the plan with Unbeatable Kemp. There's a claiming series coming up. Two horses fit this claiming series for us. Unbeatable Kemp is scheduled to race Thursday at the Meadows, and I'm going to try and drive him in the most crafty, conservative way, but win, because five days later is when the claiming series in the Poconos starts. And you have to race in every leg to be eligible to the final. So, um, so, um, uh, Kemp is scheduled to go Thursday back Tuesday. And I'm going to be completely honest with everybody. I can't imagine there's a scenario in which he still airs on Tuesday evening. But that's where he has to go. If he does win on Thursday, that'll be his 11th win. There's nowhere to hide him. And that claiming series is great. I got your message. He's closed. That's all right. Um, I might go last trip with her with uh, a set of knee boots on, but maybe just bring up some vet wrap and duct tape. We can okay. old school it. She'll okay. be fine. She she never wore them anyway. I'm not that worried about it. Just when I scored her down the other way, it looked like she might be a hair close. Okay. So bring knee boots and uh, there's some duct tape in my room. And, I got some duct tape. Okay, duct tape and vet wrap. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Lauren had asked me to pick up some uh, adhesive knee tape. So sometimes you see the horse's knees wrapped up rather than bell, rather than knee boots. Um, and with uh, with Stay Special's knees, I didn't really want to... Uh, actually, the lighting is great here. I'm going to stay right here. Uh, with Stay Special's knees, I didn't really want to um, put a constrictive set of knee boots on her. And she'll wear them, I'm sure. I'll warm her up with them and see how comfortable she seems with them on. But she has raced... Uh, I don't know if she's ever worn knee boots in her life. But the plan was to potentially wear them on her tonight. Where's my trailer at? Oh, right. It's at Brown's Clinic. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a scary feeling. Um, so, what do we got now? We have uh, Unbeatable Camp. Yo, Mister, race great in Ontario. Now, they don't race in Ontario next week, so a week from Monday, Yo, Mister will race again, which is fine. Um, mm -hmm. No free lunch is getting that uh, vet work done on him on Monday. Um, so the suspicion is that, uh, that he should be ready to race in a couple of weeks thereafter. It's been a bit of a, bit of a bumpy road back for no free launch, but I'm sure he'll make his way back soon enough. Um, um, Oakwood Cowboy, they begin jogging. Now he's been in the pool for three weeks. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any issues. He will, uh, be back jogging, um, Monday morning, and we'll see what's what with Oakwood Cowboy. Uh, Stay Close comes back in. He'll start jogging this week. We'll probably train him up end of the week. Now, the Meadows misses the next week, so he'll have, he'll probably have a couple of training sessions in him, um, into him. I, you know, there's a horse that I would love to send to Kentucky. The one thing about Kentucky, you got to pay attention to the, to the condition sheets. Um, 
And there's like a maiden, now there's a two, a bunch of middle of the road, now there's a 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 classes. And then there's a, an open and a backup class. Well, the backup class right now, brace for landing fits in nicely. Um, I would like to send an open trotter there. Does, is that going to be Kings County? Somebody said Yo Mister, but again, Yo Mister doesn't get around a 5 8 great. He gets around a good. He went in 52 in Sayota. Um, but again, I think he, well, let's let him coast up a little bit in the classes at Mohawk. And when he gets in a place where potentially him and it looks like money fit in the same class, then of course we can talk about moving them. But I don't want to systematically just dismantle Harry's burn um, from outside Ontario when he's done such a great job. We do have some horses in Ontario to move around. Dominic's not going to have 30, 40 horses all to himself there. Some of those horses will go over to Harry's in the summer. Um, so stay close. I guess he could go to Kentucky because um, he's not an open trotter at the Meadows. He's a backup class horse. I, I guess I can toy with that idea. We could train him up and send him, but I don't know what I'm doing now. I like the, Tim knows the horse well, gets along really, really well with him. Um, so I'm not sure if that's the right move. But the one thing I love about Kentucky also is just the, the quiet, the quiet setting and just the, the, the small stable feel and atmosphere to Kathy and Eric when they're there. All the horses seem to put on weight, they're quiet, and they look good. Um, uh, but they have to be a good fit, right? Because there's nothing around. It's not like, ah, I didn't get in this week. We'll go race them at X. All right, where's X? Because Sayota's five hours away. <laughs> I don't know where I don't know where X is, but it's not going to work out that well. So uh, Indiana, I don't know how far it is, but it's still a hike. So it's either there or nowhere. So we want to have some horses go. We our horses one have to fit, two have to be able to do throughout because this is April to May, May to June, June fifteenth. We're going to start sending our power down there, which will be our three year olds coming back. That'll be Arson pickpocket memory and imagination more than likely and then on top of that we'll have the likely have the jimboree fillies those three will likely head that way um we have colts that are eligible to kentucky i mean six or seven stalls probably isn't going to do it full time for for eric but we'll see what we can do maybe we can finagle our way into a few stalls but most of those stalls that are spoken for are going to be steak stalls i think um as Oak Grove starts. So a lot of question marks swirling around uh, Kentucky and what's going on right now. As of right now, I think we have four, maybe five guaranteed for sure going there. The last two roster spots I'll have to think about and work around this, uh, this weekend. Um, Kings County, another horse potentially could be, could be one of the horses heading to Kentucky. We'll see how he races on Monday and what his forward progress uh, looks like for him. And Delicious Stone DK, uh, he was also treated same as no free lunch. His was way more minor, tiny, tiny little issue, but nothing serious. In fact, he's been jogging perfectly here. We're going to train him today. And I said, ah, we better not do that. Uh, we are going to get him treated Monday and he is going into the claiming series also where he should fit pretty good. I would imagine. So delicious stone DK, that's his plan. Him and unbeatable Kemp, a few others heading down the Poconos. Uh, Tim and I were looking cause Tim has to enter. We can't, I would love to send the horse to, to Megan. No problem. Um, but Tim has to enter unbeatable camp because he's going to race on Thursday. They draw on Wednesday. Obviously, you can't change trainers before the first trainer races the horse. So I suspect you're going to see unbeatable camp, delicious stone DK, uh, and a number of other horses uh, entered for the week down in uh, in Poconos. And as I said to Amy, that's kind of I, I never understood why they didn't call it March break over here. It's because it's it's not March. That's <laughs> why they don't call it March break. Uh, it's spring break because it's the first part of April for for Ollie and Ava. Uh, they're off, so is every other kid <laughs> there, I believe. So um, we'll see if there's any activities, family activities for for us between Northfield Park and the Poconos, but uh, we'll see. And then Patrick DeProna, uh, he fooled me the bugger the other day. I just, I thought he was okay and uh, just bounced out with a, a sparkling, that's, that's a good word for it, a sparkling performance. Well, stay special is jogging. We'll see how she looks. Uh, and honestly, a sparkling performance from him and uh, just a good horse. That's what good horses do, right? Um, and you know, and I told you these guys last week, he was terrible last week. Good horses always bounce back, and he certainly did uh, with a, as I said, a, a very, very good mile. So very impressed with his outing this week, very impressed with the way the racehorses are, happy with the decisions, the moves that we've made. I know uh, some people question them and will question them. But when I see all our sophomores getting ready, 
feeling good and looking good and I see the horses were racing, racing good. Uh, it just feels like we were on the right path. So we'll continue down this path. Anyway, thank you very much for all the dialogue and feedback we've got. I'll give you guys a look. That is her. She looks good. Get a little bonus footage here of Stay Special. Now, first trip we used track. Uh, we usually go on the back track with the horses. That's Daryl going with Stay Special. And man, she looks, looks good from here. Really good. Oh, really good. Well, that's good. Anyway, um, all is well tonight. Anyway, so far at the stable, that girl there is going to race in the eighth race tonight. I'm going to go last trip with her after the fifth. But for now, we are, have concluded our race horses. I'm going to try and get the three-year-olds done before I have to stop. It would be great if I get them both done, but that would take me talking less. <laughs> take care. <laughs>